So next we're going to talk about data manipulation, which are all of the processes that allow us to adjust the data to make it more organized and easier to examine. In this video, we're going to talk about two of those processes, indexing and sorting. So to start out, let's put our SC process data frame into a spreadsheet format using the view function. We talked a little bit about indexing in earlier videos. So indexing allows us to access certain elements within the data frame. And we use indexing processes mainly to allow us to quickly include or exclude certain characteristics of data. And as we saw in earlier videos, we do this using bracket notation. So when looking at our data, let's say we want to index the instrument for respondent 11. So if we look here in row 11, that's observation number 11 or respondent 11, and we want to access their instrument. First thing we want to do is call upon the data frame and then we'll use our bracket notation. And we could think about the first value as X and the second value as Y. So X will represent a row and Y will represent a column. So we're always gonna index X or the row first and then Y the column second. So in this particular case, we want respondent or row 11 and we wanna access their instrument, which is in column position three. And we see the result that it's a guitar. So we can also index the columns using a name. So if we want to access the same thing using the column name, we'll call on the data frame. We'll use our bracket notation. We want row 11. And then within quotes, we can say instrument. Again, we get the same output. Now with any of these indexing procedures, we can assign them to an object for later use. So say we want to assign this element to an object. Let's call the object instrument for respondent 11. We'll use the gets assignment operator, and then we'll use the same indexing procedure. And for ease, let's just use the position three. And we see in the global environment that we have the instrument for respondent 11. Let's call on that object. And we see again, we get the same output. So we can also index an entire row or an entire column. And we can do so by leaving the respective value blank. And when we leave that value blank, that means all. So as an example, if we wanna see all of the responses for respondent nine, we can call on the data frame, use our brackets, We'll identify row nine, and then we want to see all of the columns. So we're just going to leave that blank. So here we've pulled out the entire row for respondent nine. Oppositely, we could do the same thing if we want to see all of the responses for a particular variable. So in this particular case, let's say we want to see all of the responses for child age. We can call on the data frame with our brackets. We want to see all of the rows, so we're going to leave the row blank, and then we want to see child age. Now again, child age is in column position two, so we could put the value two, or we can identify it using the name of the variable. So let's do that, child age. And you see here that we have all of the values for child age. Now we can also access multiple rows or multiple columns all at the same time using the concatenation function. So let's say for an example, we wanna isolate respondents two, three, and four, and we wanna see just their responses for child age and instrument. So in this case, we'll call on the data frame again, we we'll use our brackets. We're gonna use the concatenation function. Now again, thinking of X and Y, X is always going to be our rows. So here we wanna see respondents two, three, and four. So we'll identify two, three, and four. We'll separate it with a comma. And now for our columns, we wanna see instrument and child age. So we'll use the concatenate function again. Now again, we could use two and three for position two where child age is, or three for position three where instrument is, or we could use the column names. So let's just use the column names here, keeping in mind that it needs to be in double quotes. So child age and instrument. And we see that we have respondents two, three, and four. We have the response for child age and we have the response for instrument. Now subsetting, which is more referred to as either filtering or drilling down into the data, is a process that allows us to index certain characteristics. And to subset, we use a subset function. In this particular case, we usually take advantage of operators. So for example, greater than, less than, exactly equivalent to, depending on the type of data we're working with. So within our subset function, we're always gonna first specify the data frame we're working on, and then we're gonna provide our criteria. So for example, let's say we wanna subset all of the respondents who play drums. So we'll use the subset function. Again, our first argument is always gonna be the data frame that we're working on. And now we wanna identify our criteria. So we want instrument, is exactly equivalent to drums. And we see here that we get all of the respondents who play drums. Now we could do this for a quick glance, or if we need it later, we can store it into an object. So let's store this into an object called drums. Again, we'll subset using the SC process data frame and instrument 
is exactly equivalent to drums. So now we see in our global environment that we've drilled down to 30 observations across the six variables. Again, we can call this up using the drums. So if we check the class of our drums object, we see it's a data frame. So now if we're interested just in the students who play drums, we can treat this like any other data frame. So for example, we can look at the head of drums and maybe we want to see just the first 15 observations within the drums data frame. So we'll specify 15 and we'll see the first 15. So again, we can treat this like any other data frame we're working on. So now we can drill down even further into the data frame, but for didactic purposes, let's think back to our SE process data frame. Okay, so let's clear out of this. So let's say we're interested again in looking at all of the students who play drums, but only for the students who participate in private lessons for one to two years. So here we can subset on multiple criteria. Let's store this in a new object. We'll say drums one, two years. We'll use the subset function. Now again, we always wanna first indicate the data frame that we're working on. So SE processed. And now we need to specify our criteria. So again, we use instrument is exactly equivalent to drums. So we want the students who play drums and participate for one to two years. So we'll use and years participating is exactly equivalent to one to two years. We'll run the code. And now if we print the object to the console, we have all of the students who play drums and who have also participated from one to two years. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's say we want to drill down on even more criteria. We want to drill down on students who play drums, who participate for one to two years in private lessons, and they're age 14 and above. Let's store this in a new object. We're going to call it drums one to two years, 14 plus. So again, we'll use the subset function. We'll indicate our data frame, which is SE processed. Our first criteria is that instrument is exactly equivalent to drums and years participating is exactly equivalent to one to two years and child age is 14 years or above so is greater than or equal to 14. Let's run the code. We'll print the object to the console and we see we have four respondents, 66, 93, 129, and 142. These are all of the students, again, that play drums, that have been participating from one to two years, and are greater than or equal to the age of 14. So as you can see, these processes allow us to drill down into the data into very specific characteristics, and these can become particularly powerful when we're using some data visualization and plotting tools later.